Hello everyone! In this lesson we will talk about distant opposition. If you have missed to see some of my previous pawn endgame lessons, take a look at information about that in right upper corner. So we have learned earlier that there are two types of opposition regular or short opposition or distant or long opposition. The difference between these two types of opposition is that regular or short opposition is when we have only one square between the kings and distant opposition is when we have three or five squares between the kings. In this position on the board, if it is black on the move, it is very easy and trivial endgame because black will just play king f5, king f4 and the game will be drawn. But if it is white on the move, then again the game is drawn. And the game is drawn thanks to the distant opposition. Let us assume that white is playing king e2 now. Now black has to be very, very careful. If black makes mistake and plays king e5, he will lose the game. Because after king e3, now black lost the position, white gained the position, and white will win this endgame. If after king e2, black plays king f5, that of course also loses because of king f3. So the conclusion is that the only good move here is king e6, which is obtaining distant opposition. You see that there are three squares between the kings. And now, depending on what white plays, black will play according to that. So if king e3 is played, king e5, king f3, king f5, black constantly gains a position and the game is drawn. And if king f3 is played immediately, of course king f5 and the game is of course drawn. Sometimes player has a choice between regular and distant opposition. In this case, regular opposition is losing the game and distant opposition will provide draw. Let us see why is that. If black makes mistake and plays king e5 and gain regular opposition, then king f3. And now, since f5 square is controlled by g4 pawn, black is not able to obtain opposition anymore. He loses opposition and white will win. Let's see how. If king goes to e6, simply king e4, opposition, and after king f6, king d5, and we will see in, the, in this example later how white wins in this position exactly. If king e5 and then king f3 and black plays king f6 now, then simply king f4, king e6, king e4, king f6, and king d5. It would be bad, of course, in this position to play h5, because after king e6 now the position is drawn because black gained a position again. But since stronger side always gains space, king d5 is winning move. And let's see now how this position wins. Now black on the move, let's say plays king f7, king e5, king e7, king f5, king f7, and the key move is h5. Now black must choose one side, wherever he goes it is easily lost. King g7 is better move, but white will gain more space and easily win h6 pawn and he wins the game. So that is how white wins if black in the starting position makes mistake and plays king e5 short opposition. But king e7 is actually very easy draw. And now black will just wait to see where will white put his king and play according to that. If, for example, king f4, then just king f6, and now if king e4, king e6, and if h5, king e6, and now no matter that white can gain a position, he is not able to make any progress, because after king f6, it is not possible to play king d5, because of king g5, and white will lose both of his pawns. And after king e3, this is the last trick white can try, now of course not king e5 and of course not king g5 
because both of these moves will lose the game after king f3. The only good move is, of course, again, distant opposition, king e7, and the game is drawn. In this position here, if it is white on the move, again the game is drawn thanks to distant opposition. White will, of course, play king f4, and now it would be very bad for black to play king d5. Because if black plays king d5, now after king e3, he is not able to gain a position anymore. And after king e3, king e4, he loses a position. Now, it is the same position as the starting position, but with black on the move, which white easily wins. Now, let's say if he plays king to f6, then simply d5 immediately wins. And now, White wins the game because he will put his king on b7 and now he controls all remaining advancing squares for the pawn. Or if black plays king d7, then king f5 diagonal opposition, which is always preparing us to take control of regular opposition, king e5. And after king d7, king f6, gaining space, and now it is absolutely clear that we win black's pawn on c6 and easy and trivial win. That is why after king f4 the only move for black which is good is king f6 and after king g4 now not king g6 because now black king is far away from these pawns on c and d file and d5 will win the game, the game because nothing stops now white c pawn. But diagonal opposition king e6 draws the game. Now, the last chance for white to try to win the game is king f3, hoping that black will make mistake and play king d5, and then to win with king e3 and king e4, but black has easy draw by playing king f7, which is distant to position, and no chance to make progress. This is another example in which white has a choice to choose between short opposition or distant opposition. Again, choosing short or regular opposition is bad choice and he will lose the game if he plays king f1. Because after king d2, king f2, and now after king d3, he loses a position, he is not able to gain it anymore. And after king g3, let's see how black wins. Simply king e3, and after king g2, king e2, now he must play king g3, and the key winning move is king f1. Now it is clear that uh, black will win white's pawn on f5, and nothing can stop this e pawn to easily promote. That is why, in the starting position, the only good move is distant opposition king h1. And now, if black tries to play tricky move g4, then... The move which makes draw here is excellent move king g2. And if now, of course, g takes f3, king d3, and then king e4, and easy draw, white wins this pawn on e-file. And if king d2 is played, now h takes g4, and both sides will promote at the same time, and this endgame is, of course, drawn. So g4 cannot help to win after king h1. If king e1... Now short opposition, king g1, king, g, king d2, king h2, distant again. King c3, king g3, distant opposition. King d3, and now again, white must be very careful. The only move which draws is king h3, distant opposition. King e3, king g3, king e2, king g2, king d1, and finally again, king h1, no progress for black. The game is drawn thanks to distant opposition. And this is a homework for you. You will now try to solve this position, how to make draw with white on the move, and to apply the knowledge which you have from the previous example. This is a little bit more complicated than the previous example because there are much more squares which can be used for both sides, but with precise play, white will make draw in this position. You can place the comment with the solution below the video on YouTube and try to solve this and let me know was it complicated or not. 
Also, if you want to see any specific content in my video chess lessons, please place the comment below my videos on YouTube. Take a look at the suggested videos and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel.